Hello YouTube, today we're gonna talk about color. Well, color in photos, that is. We're gonna be covering a few concepts as well as techniques regarding color, white balance, and color correction. So yeah, without further ado, let us jump right in. It is the 3rd of July 2013, a Wednesday. You are watching 0612 TV. <laughs> This is 0612TV. Welcome aboard. So let's talk about color. The first thing I want you to know is, well, our eyes are pretty cool. Now, in a situation where the lighting conditions of a room is such that things get slightly discolored, our eyes are actually able to naturally compensate for that. And of course, what that means is, using your eyes, you cannot actually see those discolorations. Now, the same cannot be said of a camera. Since the camera only captures, well, whatever light hits the sensor, discolorations are going to be faithfully recorded. The whole point of today's video is to help you identify these discolorations. In addition, we're going to actually attempt to counteract this by looking at a feature on your camera called white balance. Finally, in the event that, well, that didn't work out right, we're going to actually take a look at trying to fix this problem in post using an image editing program. So without further ado, let us jump right into part 1. We're gonna actually take a look at these discolorations and try to understand them. First of all, to use a proper term, these discolorations are actually called a color cast. Color cast can happen for a variety of reasons. For example, take a look at this picture. This particular mall decided to install a kind of yellowish orange lighting. The images you take under such circumstances are going to turn out orangey. Similarly, if you are taking photos outdoors under a situation where it's cloudy or when the sun is setting, things are going to look kind of blue to your camera, such as in this situation where we were actually barbecuing at about 5 to 6 p.m. In the case of the first photo, the color cast is a yellow one, whereas in the case of the second, the color cast is a blue one. On to part 2. Now, we're going to harness a feature in your camera called white balance. Now, most cameras have this feature, even compact cameras. Now, in case you haven't found a white balance feature on your camera, it's the place where you actually get to tell it, you know, whether it's sunny now or whether it's cloudy, whether you're indoors, you know, taking photos under fluorescent lighting or bulb lighting. Yeah, that's a place. If you actually toggle through the options, you can see that the coloration of the image actually changes depending on your setting. But the thing is, what exactly is white balance? You see, when you're actually shooting pictures under different conditions, there is going to be a different color cast. And so what happens when you actually select one of those options in your camera is that it's going to guess at the color cast of the particular scene and your camera is going to actually apply its own coloration to that image to counteract that effect. So practically, here's how that works. Let's say now you're shooting outside under cloudy conditions. Of course, we would expect the color cast to be blue. When you actually put on the cloudy option in your white balance menu, what's going to happen is it's going to apply a reddish yellowish kind of color cast to your image. So of course, what we expect to happen is that this added reddish yellowishness is going to actually counteract the bluishness that is actually observed within the scene. If everything is done right, a color that's supposed to be white will end up still being recorded as white. And essentially, that is white balance. The reason why it's called white balance is because, well, your camera cannot actually tell what is white. If you're holding up a white card under a blue color cast, it's going to look blue to the camera. White balance would be actually finding where the balance is to make white things look white. This is an informal definition, by the way, that I just made up, but that is the idea. Now, in some cases, for some cameras, you are actually able to set up a custom white balance. Now, the way this is done is you actually hold up a white or a grey card in front of your camera. And basically, what you're going to do is you're going to actually let your camera sample that colour. Essentially, what you're doing is you're telling your camera that under this current colour cast, this is what white looks like. This is, of course, extremely precise. Your camera is going to be able to actually figure out exactly what to do to actually counteract this colour cast. And therefore, if your camera has this feature, I encourage you to use it because then you will get the perfect white balance. Now, for many cameras, there actually is an auto white balance. And I guess you can kind of figure out how that works. Your camera is going to look at the entire image and if it realizes that 
all the pixels in the image is shifted towards one color, it will try to guess that that is actually the color cast, and it will try to counteract that. Of course, there are limits to auto white balance, which is why of course it will be preferable to at least choose one of the presets, if not actually, you know, customizing the white balance. But then, what if you haven't watched this video, you are home now with all your pictures and you realize that everything has a weird color cast? Well, you'll be happy to know that all hope is not lost, you can still pop this into an image editor and try to make things right. Of course, for those of you shooting raw with a DSLR, this would not be a problem because color temperature can be set in post, but chances are if you're shooting raw, you don't need my help anyway. But for the rest of you who have weirdly colored JPEGs, go ahead and drop that into your image editor of choice. Now for me, as always, I will be using GIMP. If you're using any other tool like Photoshop, you are of course welcome to do so. The operations we're going to be doing today are going to be pretty simple because, well, we are only going to be using human saturation as well as a color balance tool. I know for a fact that both GIMP and Photoshop have both of these functions. If you are using any other editor, you might actually have to hunt for a color balance tool, but chances are you have that as well. So here's the deal. In my workflow, personally, I like to actually remove the color cast first. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually open the hue and saturation tool. In this case, since the color cast is bluish, I'm going to actually select the blue color and reduce the saturation. Right off the bat, you actually see the situation improving already because, well, things are starting to look less blue. Of course, if your color cast is blue, don't just adjust the pure blue one. You might want to look at the cyan side of things as well. So now that I've kind of reduced the color somewhat, I'm going to actually click OK and pop out of the hue and saturation window. And well, this is the result so far. Yes, there is an improvement. No, it still doesn't really feel right, which is why we're actually going to move on and try to make it look even more realistic. You see, when there is a color cast, it doesn't only add blue, it sort of actually takes away from the other colors. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to open the color balance tool and try to breathe some life back into those prawns. Now, the interesting thing about the color balance tool is that, well, you actually get to do the shadows, highlights, and mid-tones separately. As you can see very clearly, I have the highlight selected, and all the crazy things I'm doing right now are actually only going to affect the brightest parts of the picture. What this means is you can actually specifically target your color correction to various parts of the image. And this is actually quite an important feature when you're actually trying to counteract color cast. As you can see, the actual stones bit of the barbecue pit is actually still slightly bluish. What I'm gonna do is, since they are dark, I'm actually going to go to the shadows part and bring down the blue even more. Now, also notice the way color balance actually works. When you're actually bringing down blue, it is also equivalent to saying you're bringing up yellow. And that is of course why this slider is actually labeled in this particular manner. When I actually reduce the blue, the stones start to look a little bit yellowish. This is of course the time where we actually attempt to tweak this kind of subtly to see what color works the best. So now those stones look okay, let's move on to the actual prawns themselves. I guess they will fall more within the mid-tones to highlights range, which is why of course I can then specifically target just the prawns. From our earlier step of desaturating the image, the prawns themselves look kind of whitish, palish. And what we're actually going to do to remedy that is to actually push a little more red and green into the highlights and mid-tones. As usual, there's going to be a little bit of fiddling around. You always have to experiment and try to find what works best. But at the end of the day, these are the results. If we were to actually do a side-by-side -side comparison, you can see how much of an improvement that is. The bluish color cast is completely removed and the prawns kind of jump out at you. Of course, this is just color correction. We are only kind of correcting the flaws and not actually moving into stylizing. If I wanted to stylize the image, I could of course pop into the color balance dialog box and push things further. However, that is not our topic for today. If you're interested in doing that, you might want to check out my Lomography Effects tutorial where we do some pretty serious color grading. And basically, that's it for today's video. I hope you learned some concepts in color and coloration in images. In particular, I hope you learned about you know using the white balance tool on your camera. Of course, if you can fix your images at the time of taking it, then you will be saved the trouble of actually having to do it in post. 
Of course, learning how to use an image editing program is always helpful. So yeah, hopefully today's video is helpful in multiple ways. Once again, that's all there is for today's episode. If you have any comments, queries or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow me on my official Twitter account at twitter.com slash 0612tv. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching 0612TV.